What is going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again for another Tottenham update, and let's bring you up to date with everything surrounding Tottenham over the last 24 hours. And we'll start off with Tottenham's response to the Spurs Supporters Trust. Um, they wrote to Tottenham a few days ago asking for urgent clarity about the direction of the club and what the aims are and how Tottenham measures success. And uh, Spurs have now responded to uh, the Supporters Trust, saying that the Tottenham are very keen to respond to the four questions raised by the Tottenham Supporters Trust, but they will only do so after the transfer window. They went on to say that Fabio Paratici is going to uh, make a statement after the transfer window about the direction of the club and how they believe Spurs are doing with their project. Um, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it that they are unwilling right now to answer um, the supporters trust because they don't really have an answer and they're not 100% convinced what direction um, we are heading uh, whether they're going to back Antonio Conte and whether Spurs are heading in the right direction at the moment or you could look at it in a way that Tottenham are refusing to respond to after the transfer window because they're hoping that the transfer window will go positively um, for Tottenham and they're hoping to satiate the fans during the window and they'll only respond once um, that has happened and so they have something to respond to rather than right now where they don't want to really give away all their cards in terms of uh, the transfer window and what their plans are maybe they're keeping their cards close to their chest I'm hoping it's the latter and not the former where which which I'm kind of in, I've got an inkling it could be um, I'm hoping Tottenham um, have a plan in place and we know what we're doing right now with the trans transfer window and, and we're willing to back Conte but um I've still got a voice in the back of my mind telling me do we really are we really sure of the direction we're going um do we have a plan in place right now uh, to what we want to see on the pitch what signings we want to make hopefully we get answers after transfer window i'm not going to be holding my breath but um i'm saying from a optic standpoint the fact they're waiting to after transfer window to give that answer I mean, as I said, you can look at it two ways, but it doesn't look particularly brilliant on Tottenham and um, it kind of looks like they're buying time. But we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to the next topic, uh, we'll be talking about uh, Pape Matessa, and this comes from Sky Sports in Italy, and it says, Antonio Conte is unwilling to let Pape Matessa leave on loan this month. Sal uh, Salaritana um, are expecting Tottenham's final decision on Thursday, whether he is going to go on loan. Obviously, Tottenham and... Um, Salarin, Salarintana uh, have been in discussions about a potential six-month loan deal for Papamante Sar, but it seems as though his recent uptick in form and his uh, recent um, appearances in the Premier League of, um, and in the FA Cup have convinced Conte that he has a part to play this season and he's not just a player um, willing to um, make up the numbers in the squad. Uh, his impressive cameos have definitely caught the eye of Antonio Conte and a lot of Tottenham fans, and it seems as though he may have, he may have convinced Conte that um, he's worth keeping around and not going on loan. Um, for me personally... Um, I hope if he does stick around, he does use him like he has been recently, and he doesn't just waste away on the bench and la and he does and you know his development doesn't stunt. I hope that doesn't happen. But I, for one, have definitely been impressed by some of his latest appearances, and he definitely looks like he's ready to contribute. And if Conte uh, is unwilling to let him go, it seems as though he agrees. So that could be very very positive for his development at Tottenham. More now on Pedro Porro. Who else? First of all, we'll talk about the update from Fabrizio Romano. Uh, he says more on Pedro Porro can confirm again he's Tottenham's priority as a new right back as reported last week Spurs are now in contact with Sporting via intermediaries to discuss and find a way for January move um, but Sporting have been clear it's either 45 million uh, release clause or Porro will stay Mundo Deportivo and The Sun are claiming Chelsea are closer to signing Pedro Porro than Tottenham and they could be looking to hijack the deal which is obviously a source of concern and paranoia for a lot of the Tottenham fans um, um, as I've said before, if Spurs scouting network have identified Pedro Porro as the right back they believe can be the upgrade in that um, in that in that formation and in that position, then I for one think 45 million release clause isn't that much of an outlay to the benefits it will give us. Now I know I understand deals aren't always simple um, if you want to do them in um, uh, installments rather than paying all out up front and all these kind of different things and negotiations going to play and I get that 
But I don't want to be sitting here at the end of the window thinking, oh, you know, we didn't push the boat out more. We let either Chelsea get more. He's still at Sporting and we're going to have to contend with Doherty and Emerson for the second half of the season because we didn't want to stump up the cash. I, for one, think the excuses have run out for me for um, this board when it comes to these kind of deals and we are desperate for that position. We Everyone knows it. We needed it in the summer. We didn't um, adequately, um, you know, replay, um, uh, boost that position. So um, it's time now to spend the money where it needs to be spent and Pedro Parra, I believe, could be the player that we need in that position and it's so it seems as though the Tottenham um, recruitment and Conte believe the same. So sign him up. Last of the transfer new, uh, news, Ben Jacobs was talking about Harry Kane and he claims Chelsea and Man United could be in the conversation for Harry Kane this summer. Spurs were asking £200 million when Man City came calling 18 months ago. The price would still be over £150 million. Now, that's interesting because obviously he would have one year left on his contract um, in the summer and he'll be 30 years of age. And let's be honest, whoever you are, if you're 30 years of age and one year left in your contract, you are not going to be sold for 150 million. So if he's saying that, is he pricing Kane out of a move if Kane doesn't decides not to sign a contract in the summer and decides he wants to leave? We're not getting 150 million um, for him in that kind of situation. Um, so if they do, um, if they do hold strong on that price, I do believe they are pricing Kane out of a move, um, and we'll see how that would play out in the summer. I, I believe if Kane doesn't sign, um, it might be in everyone's best interest to sell him, unless we can convince him to sign a contract, because um, we do not want a repeat of. 2021 with his first six months of lot first um, six months of that season 21 22 and he was performing really below par and didn't believe in the project if he wants to leave i think this time we have to grant him that and i don't think a 150 million price tag would i do believe that would price him out of a move so um if he doesn't sign in the summer i do believe uh would have to lower that price tag but if he does sign i don't think he's going anywhere and i believe he's in it for the long haul now that's what i'm hoping does happen in the summer but still very up in the air um, his future tied to conte's future so it's going to be very very interesting to see what happens and last but not least is some injury news coming out of Hotspur Way yesterday. Dejan Kulusevski and Yves Basuma have returned to full Tottenham training yesterday. Benton Conrad Charleston still not um, among the uh, Spurs players among the group training but there is hope that Benton Core will be uh, available for the North London Derby definitely in a bench capacity but Kulusevski would be massive a massive return he's so important to our attack and he really would allow us more um, threat up against uh, this Arsenal side who are very, very dangerous. It's going to be very difficult to play against. And we know that Kulusevski, I, th I believe he was missing in the last North London derby, um, but he makes such a difference to his second. It's a massive boost that he's going to be available. Basuma, um, it's going to be interesting to see if he is available for the North London derby, which it looks like he will be, whether he does play, if Bentacle is still out, or whether he gives Papa Mate Sar a run out in the North London derby considering um, his recent form. Or will he, will he think that the occasion is too big for him? I, for one, would probably stick with Pesuma. It's, a fa it's a, probably a safer option, but Papa Matasar has definitely shown something, so I would consider it, but I think I'd go for Pesuma um, ultimately. But Kulisevsky, I think if he's available, get him in the team as soon as possible. As much as Hill has done well, we need Kulisevsky um, fit and ready to go, especially for such a big game. So massive boost. He's back in full training, and let's hope he is fully fit for Sunday. That is your Tottenham update. Let me know in the comment section below anything we talked about today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs. <laughs>